Hello everyone, welcome back for some more Let's Play Fate Grand Order. We're continuing on with some Phantom Thievery, which doesn't have a trailer. So we're going to have some fun with it, as you've seen. Um, also, hey, this is where we do the exchange. I was like, huh, what's up with that? Why can't I do it otherwise? It's because we go here. So... There is. <laughs> he makes funny noises. All right, so we have a couple we can choose from here. And honestly, at the end of the day, what it comes down to mostly is because like their, their effects, I looked at all their effects. They're okay. One, I won't get any of the cheap ones here because I actually got some of these from the... Uh, the free summon, so I'm not going to do that. It's mostly just picking the one that you think is coolest. And if I'm going to be honest, I got to go with my guy, Demonic Parade, because Yatagarasu Shiro is freaking dope. Like, the rest of them are okay, right? Flowers in Cafe, that's nice, right? Except for his massive yaoi hands. Uh, I still don't think that's Jason. Um, Dante's is, yeah, I mean, the rest the rest of them are all pretty standard, but Demonic Parade is the one that, when I look at, I'm like, that's a cool one. That's a neat one, right? Because, I mean, like, that's a sick design. It's really cool. Know the demon's ways to annihilate demons. I see it's not a bad idea. Didn't expect Nephilim to exist in this age. Brings up memory. Seriously, I mean, the only get-up, yep. A peculiar trio that was formed in, uh, formed in... That was formed in, at, by, oh, the demand of a particular passionate group of people in Kaldi. As a side note, first unit commander bribed vice commander to participating with uh, Takuan Pickles. Yeah, that's good, though. I like it. I like it. So, uh, we are back, though, for some more actual plot. And like I said, I did do some of the grinding. Um, I did do some of this. I mean, there's, because it's not a very grind heavy event, it's fine. I can just, you know, do them every now and then and get my items and that's it. So that's quite nice. Anyway, section two, snatch steel straight. Are we doing all triple S's for all of them? I mean, cause that's a cool gimmick too. Okay. Earlier, I was robbed of my ability to fight. It seems that the curator and his servants weren't lying about that. However, it also seems my ability to fight is the only thing they took. Okay, before you go any further... Yes? What the heck are you wearing? There we go. <laughs> this? This is my phantom thief attire. Oh. Well, I guess you are still pretty young, so... <laughs> Don't think I can't see the look of pity in your eyes. I think you look cool. No comment. It does work for you. Thank you, Master. Phantom Thief Amakusa Shirotokisada at your service. Um, now, as I was saying, since my combat abilities have been sealed away, I, of course, can't currently use my noble phantasm, Twin Arm Big Crunch, which sounds like a cereal. But fortunately, I have two other noble phantasms that aren't used for combat. Right Hand Evil Eater, 
and left hand, Xanadu Matrix. And those still work just fine. What kind of noble phantasms are they? Well, to make a long story short, as a servant who should by all rights have been summoned as a caster, rather than a ruler, I can use all kind of magecraft to support you in various ways. As long as you aren't fighting, there's nothing you can't do. That being said, just because you can fly through the air or smash through a wall doesn't mean you should. At the risk of repeating myself, let me say once more that our only goal is to steal that Holy Grail, which means our first order of business is to disguise ourselves. Huh? Why? Come now, Master, don't you remember? Security already knows what you look like. As for the rest of you, I'll go ahead and strengthen your disguise charms. That should ensure you all look like ordinary humans, at least as long as you don't do any fighting. Of course, the jig will also be up if you do anything to draw suspicion to yourselves. From there, it will all come down to our smarts, our courage, our planning, and our prep work. Jinkei, I'd like you to keep using Presence Concealment to monitor everything that goes on in the museum. Got it. Keep an especially close eye on the security guard's patrol patterns and let us know if you see anything else that seems odd to you. You are the assassin who tried to kill one of the most powerful emperors in history, so I'm certain your keen eye and attention to detail will be crucial to success in this heist. Oh, is that a bit of blush I see? Shut up, master. Sansong, I'd like you to pretend to be a doctor uh, on vacation and go learn anything you can about the museum. The food stands outside should be a good place to start. Uh, well, I don't mind doing that. Are you certain no one will be able to tell I'm a servant, though? Oh, yes. Uh, you've had a charm cast on you already, and I'll improve it, so I don't think you'll have to anything to worry about. Beyond that, you'll just need to trust me. Mm. Fortunately, no one on the museum's side knows which of us are servants, apart from me, of course. They have figured out there are more besides me, but it should be impossible to de for them to determine who exactly we are. All right. Well, I'll trust you on this, Amakusa. That said, I'm not exactly hopeful about being able to find out much in the way of useful information. Ah, but that's because I still have one more important thing to tell you. I want you to conduct yourself as though you were truly a doctor. You need to act as though you're not here to harm the museum or to steal anything from it. In fact, you should forget you're a servant altogether. If you can't convince yourself you're just a doctor and nothing more, you'll probably blow your cover. I see. Understood. In that case, it'd probably be better if I don't know about the rest of the plan. Would you mind keeping it a secret from me, Amakusa? Not at all. So what should I do? You and Master are going to stick together, Voyager. Me and Master? Me and Voyager? Between the two of you? Uh, I think you'll be the more natural fit for this, Master. I'm going to dye your hair blonde. From now on, you and Voyager are going to be siblings. Oh, siblings. I, uh, I see. Can I be Canada Arm? Please let me be Canada Arm. Aw, oh, frick, we ought to be humans. You're going to pretend to be tourists visiting the museum every day. Yeah, won't they suspect something if, if we do that? Not at all. It's a very big museum and it's filled with all sorts of relics and artifacts related to heroes throughout history. I'm certain you can pull off a convincing big brother who's only there because of his younger brother's hero's obs hero obsession. I know lots about heroes, especially the ones who became constellations. I'm going to be the best big brother I can. For the time being, I'd like to focus on your roles and get into character. We have a long road ahead of us. And I'll start by getting a room in a nearby inn. I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor. I'll conceal my presence and stick close to the museum. Should we go to the museum too? Well, I can't wait to hear some cool hero facts. I have lots. Okay, let's go. Now then, as for me, I better start remembering what it was like when I had nothing to my name. This job is going to take ingenuity, hard work, perseverance, physics, and psychology. Whoever said being a thief is easy? What are we fighting? What's going on? Well, let's use you to at least see what you look like. Um, otherwise, I think I, I have my just strong team here, which is just pretty much things to do cool things with essentially right just be cool use stuff we can check your noble phantasm this way too all right let's uh 
see what you can do. I'm curious what he looks like in motion. Let us see. Uh, is this... Oh, we can't use your noble phantasm, right. Um, okay. We're going for some, like, deep meta stuff, I guess. Right? Okay. Um, we'll get that on... Whoops, didn't mean for that on you. That's not who I wanted to click on, but okay. Alright, that was a mistake. Uh, but that's fine. That's... That was... It's a little strange. Our initial planning phase is an enemy, but sure, it's a, it's a metaphor. Alright. Love is rider kick. Alright. Unfortunately, we'll be able to use his... Big Bang Attack! Which is a shame, because I want to see what Big Crunch looks like with him. Um, let's shuffle. I want to see if we can get it. Okay, good. We can at least get a full combo to see if you do some crazy things. Let's see here. Okay, so that's roughly the same, just with your stick instead of the swords, and you're saying steal. Okay. Alright. 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 We'll finish this off. One, two, three. All right. I mean, I don't have to use Voyager here, but it is nice that he gets, you know, he's getting some more bond up and, uh, you know, he's, he's always going to do good damage. So that's why. Yeah, sure. It's fine by me. I'll use them. Okay, so that is our plan killed. Are we gonna, is that how it's, we're gonna get around the, we can't fight, except we're gonna fight manifestations of the parts of our plan because we still need combat because that's how it works. Is everything all right? Oh yes, she's just feeling a little under the weather. Let me take a look. Oh, she's suffering from heat exhaustion. Really? But it's not that even that hard. Oh, it's because it's much warmer now than it was last night, which was quite chilly. She had a little trouble adjusting to the difference in temperature. Fortunately, her symptoms are fairly mild, so she should feel better once she gets some rest. I suggest you ask one of the museum staff to let her stay in the infirmary for a while. Okay, I will, thanks. Not at all. Um, I'm afraid the infirmary is a bit crowded at the moment. If it's just a little heat exhaustion, we would prefer that you make use of one of the museum's benches instead. I see. I'll have to call an ambulance. Uh-huh. You can't take heat exhaustion lightly, regardless of how mild its symptoms may be. If you have a place on the premises where she can be treated, that's where she should go. Should you refuse, I may need to take this to the museum's curator. I understand. Please come with me, miss. I'm coming too. Um, sir, I'm afraid I can't... Oh, I suppose you have a physician on call? Um, I'm afraid we don't quite have the funds for that. We do have a nurse among our staff, but as for an in-house doctor on standby, well, I suppose no matter the era, we are always short on doctors. Very well, I will serve as this museum's on-call physician until closing time, at least for as long as I'm on vacation. In the mornings, I'll admire the art, and in the afternoons, I'll work at the infirmary. Of course, I'll always come help at a moment's notice, in the event of an emergency. I won't demand payment for my services, but I would certainly appreciate it if I could at least waive my entry fees. Um, I'm not sure if, considering how many visitors this museum gets, I think you want as many doctors on call as you can get. All right, I accept your proposal. Wow. Actually gaslit. <laughs> hey, you hear about them ghosts? Normal thing. The other guy's like, we just started guard duty. Are we really doing this? Uh, ghosts? What ghosts? So then you don't know about the voices. You can sometimes hear in the Holy Grail exhibit. Oh, those ain't ghosts. They're just the security detail the curator hired, right? Not that I've ever seen them while I'm on patrol. I'm telling you, man. Those are the ghosts. They're in that room 24-7. 
and there ain't even a bathroom in there. You think that you think they shit in the corner? I've checked the corners. There's nothing. You know, this museum is pretty weird in a lot of ways. I've been to a few other museums over the years, but I have never seen one with guards armed like us. I hear some things about that Holy Grail, too. Well, apparently... <laughs> I do believe I... I don't believe I pay you two to stand around chatting all day. Or is there so little for you to do, you can, you, you can occupy yourselves in no other fashion. We're sorry, sir. What happened again, sir? Lazy good-for-nothings. Huh. Is someone there? Huh. I don't think he saw me. It must have just been a hunch. I suspect this guy was no ordinary curator, but it might even be more trouble than I thought. Let's see. This belonged to a Skandar. And this is a relic from Sparta. Well, that's really something seeing them in person. But this isn't really Achilles' shield. It's a fake. Oh, and this is... Uh, excuse me, young man. Huh? You mean me? I think he does. I have to ask you not to say things like that. This is... That is indeed Achilles' real shield. It was excavated by a team of archaeologists and authenticated by trained experts. But it doesn't match the poem. Huh? Whoever made this probably wanted to recreate the shield as it's described in the Iliad. But the two cities drawn in the shield are supposed to contrast each other. Uh, con contrast? One city is supposed to represent peace by showing weddings and court trials. The other is supposed to represent war with disturbing images of blood and violence. But both cities depicted here at peace, even though Ares and Athena, the gods of war, are on the shield. Oh, wow, you're right. I'm guessing whoever made the shield probably did this on purpose, just to have some fun. See, if you look closely around the cities... Oh, hey, look at the time. We'd better get going. Uh, but don't worry, it's still a really nice shield. Out here calling them... <laughs> calling them out. That's pretty good. Around the cities? Oh, so this is what he was talking about. The writing is tiny, but it actually says... Love and peace. You know... In English... Now what are we going to do? Wah, wah. Did I say something I shouldn't have? Uh, I think we're okay. We got off with just a little warning. Uh-huh. I figured our disguise would work best if we did whatever we felt like. Hey, you there. How about a freshly fried donut for your little brother? Uh, two, please. Nothing beats a good jelly-filled donut. For real. Looks yummy. <laughs> it really is freshly fried. It's yummy, isn't it, brother? Mm-hmm. You think we really do look like siblings? I mean, yeah, if you gave me blonde hair, we would look the same. Of course, you're like the little brother I always wanted. Thanks, master. I'm really happy I have an older brother like you, too. You're nothing like someone else I could name. <laughs> Reese. Come to think of it, I wonder when this singularity is taking place. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Gotcha. I wonder if I'm up there in space. Somewhere far, far away from here. And if I am, I wonder if I could see the pale blue dot. I find myself thinking about that kind of thing sometimes. If anyone could Voyager, I'm sure it was you. Thanks. Master, this is nice. I think there's a word that fits this feeling perfectly. A word that means something really lovely and wistful, all at the same time. It's luppy luppy. Oh, romantic? That's it. Romantic. Not in, like, the love sense, because the, the term of romance doesn't always mean love. Like the dawn of romance, or romance dawn, right? You know, Master, whenever you hear the word romantic, you always look really happy and really lonely all at once. There you two are. Oh, Sanson. The doctor. Hi, Mr. Sanson. What's up? I'm just taking a short break. 
They're very short staffed here, so it takes a lot out of me just to stay on top of things. Sounds rough. Hang in there. That said, the work itself is quite fulfilling, though a little nerve-wracking, too. I do have some knowledge of modern medicine, but many of my medical skills are somewhat unorthodox. I'm sure you never did get your medical license. Don't say that out loud. <laughs> Don't let the museum hear you say that. A lot of different subjects. Well, I do understand the logic in stealing the grail, since we can't take it by force. I also can't help but feel a little conflicted about the whole thing, ethically speaking. Sanson is an interesting character to me. Because in his kind of plainness, he does just feel like a guy. Like a lot of servants in, in, in Fate feel like the larger than life heroes that they are. But Sanson in particular doesn't feel like that. Whenever he's here, he just feels like a dude along with us. There's a couple other servants where it's like that too. Where you're like, we're not here with the heroes. We're here with just a... He's just a guy. And he doesn't even have any crazy, like, predilections or anything. Like, yeah, he can kill people. But it's just... It's just something he did, right? It's... It's... Yeah. Anyways, talk to me. Do you think we shouldn't be doing this, Sanson? No, it's not that. If I think I'm in favor of this plan, it's just that something about it is bugging me. Nah, it's not right either. Maybe thrilling is a better word for it? It's like I know this is wrong, but I can't stop myself from doing it. In fact, I don't even want to. Like a guilty pleasure? Exactly. I know stealing is cowardly. It's also illegal and immoral. But when we actually have a moral obligation to steal the object in question as we do here... We're putting together an intricate plan to do so. Well, that just makes it all very exciting. Reminds me of Arsène Lupin, the legendary thief. Now his stories still thrill people to this day. Okay, How? hmm. When was Ar when was uh, Arsène Lupin's stories written? When 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 was that? Um, Maurice. Uh, LeBlanc wrote it in 1905. 1905. Okay. And, um... Uh, Charles and Marie Sanson. He was, of course, yeah, in the 1700s. Died in 1800. So that's just him with his knowledge from the Grail. But, I mean, also it is cool, of course, that, you know, he would probably feel a bit of pride from the French heritage, right? Um, anyway, I'd better get back to work. See you later. Oh, also, Arsene, that's another Persona reference. Uh, 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 no, I mean, it's not. It's not. In fact, it's the other way around. Persona and Phantom Thieves come from Arsene Lupin originally, but some people... Some people don't know that. It is what it is. I think today went well. Do you think so too, Master? Uh, yep. How about we head to the hotel? Good idea. I can't wait to lie down on that nice soft bed. Does Caldia not have nice soft beds? That'd be, that'd be a bit sad. That'd be a bit sad, actually. They can't give every servant a bed that's super comfy. That's a bit, that's a bit sad. Uh, all right, well... Uh, that said, um, that's the end of that. Yeah, we I might have to do these kind of like piecemeal again. So yeah, sounds good. I'll grind out. Uh, I mean, grind out. Probably just do this one a couple times, get some stuff. Um, do that event there. How do I get the cards? How do I get the calling cards? Unlocks on 3738. Okay, so that's, that's later, I guess. Right? I'm not missing anything. How do I get those? I didn't actually read them. Let's see here. I thought it would just be an easy thing to get. But it seems to not be. God, you, yeah, you just get a bunch of stuff. It is funny that it, all the male servants and also Jinke. Jinke is also there. Um, so let's see here. God, look at the even the arrows. Right? Yeah, Spiritron Dress will work towards that. Uh, oh! 
Jin K gets a buff. Mo gain Golden Body turns into Mona Lisa. Great. Arts card up for everyone. Baptism Ray becomes Goblet of Seraph. Change to decrease a single enemy's charge. Decrease Buster attack resistance. And it wow! That's really good. And you get uh, apply special attack king, apply the state. Okay, so you just get a big buff there too. Nice. Where's the things, the little cards? Does it not say? Maybe you just get them as you continue playing. Unless I go to the event shop and I click the... Okay. Yeah, how do I... Log in each day during the campaign. Oh, yes. Yeah, so just keep playing. Log in each day. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Cool beans. Uh, okay, so I will see you all in a bit where we will continue on with this. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We're here with some more. I did a few of these. Nothing too much to worry about. It is nice that it's the same class. And now we're going to Odeurs, Apertif, or appetizer three terms for roughly the same thing and it's not alliterative so uh no points for you sorry all right let's sneak on in yeah there are three no four things you need to steal something Preparation, that is, a plan. Flexibility, the ability to react to changing circumstances. An exit strategy, to ensure you'll always have a way out no matter what happens. And finally, the most important thing, which is truly essential for a successful heist, luck. Good work today, everyone. I ended up volunteering at the museum's infirmary. Is that a good thing? I think so. It's doctory. I agree. You did a wonderful job of infiltrating the museum. As I told you before, I duck myself as the Ryder Doctor. Yeah, I remember. As far as I can tell, the curator doesn't seem to be a mage. But the fact that this singularity that this is a singularity is definitely making things harder. Incidentally, he doesn't seem to be a master either. I didn't sense any connection between him and that mysterious worker I fought whatsoever. Wait, hold on, that can't be right. I mean, we know rogue servants exist, so it's not particularly surprising for, their, for those servants to be summoned here. But there's no way they'd obey that curator guy if he wasn't their master. Not necessarily. I can think of one way around that rule. He could have asked the Holy Grail for the power to control them. Isn't that kind of a backwards way of doing things? Yes, I suppose it is. Well, it may be easier in one sense, since servants can't drain his magical energy without a normal contract... Simply having the Holy Grail grant a wish like that certainly wouldn't make him their master. Not to mention, they would turn on him in an instant at the slightest blunder. Maybe he's just very confident in his ability to control servants. Or he simply doesn't care what happens to himself. Yeah, that might be it. I'm sure you know this well yourself, Jin Kei, but there is definitely strength to be found when one is willing to throw their life away. Yeah, there is. It's far from a lasting strength, and you lose it all the instant you fear for your life. But if you can ignore the risks and keep it up, well, it would certainly make you a daunting opponent. And he definitely values that museum's reputation more than his own life. Um... Which means Voyager pointing out that shield of Achilles there on display as a counterfeit was... bad? Not at all. It was excellent. Uh? Once the curator hears about it, he'll be beside himself. Any collector who wants their prized art collection to be recognized would feel the same. Very true. I was able to watch the curator briefly when I was working as a doctor. And it was clear he cares a great deal about the relics on display. Maybe you should try telling him that you're Charles Henry Sanson. He might put you on display too as long as you show him some proof. I'll pass. I have no desire to stand around all day being gawked at like a figure at a wax museum. Hey, does that sound terrifying to you? Please watch uh, the anime Vivi, Fluorite Eyes song, because holy crap. Something wrong? Oh, no, not at all. I think I might have just seen our way in is all. Sanson, did you find out if the curator has a favorite hero? Apparently he doesn't. He claims he wants to collect everyone, from fearsome gods of war, to influential artists, to shrewd kings. 
regardless of their race, nationality, or time period. I see. So that's why those displays are arranged so haphazardly. From what I'm told, the curator is constantly talking about how the world can't get enough heroes. Well, he's not wrong there. Ah, then that should be our way past the first obstacle. Hmm? If the curator cares about heroes that much, then do you think he would uh, take a look at any route that comes his way, regardless of how credible it is? Yes, I definitely do. Though, if what Voyager said is true, he doesn't seem to have any real ability to determine authenticity himself. Maybe, maybe not. I think it's more he cares about, uh, he cares more about collecting relics of heroes so much that authenticity no longer matters to him. I see. He must figure it doesn't matter if a relic is authentic or not, as long as it's sufficiently awe-inspiring. Indeed. So if we bring in a relic of our own, we should definitely be able to get closer to him. Let's give it a shot, shall we? Are you saying we donate some of our weapons or noble phantasms? Uh, I'm afraid my noble phantasm might be too big for that. My executioner's sword isn't anything special either. There are hundreds just like it from that time period. I don't have any weapons I could donate either. Too bad. Uh, that doesn't make you any less of a hero, Voyager. Thanks. I hope you're right. You've really taken a you really taken to the whole sibling thing, haven't you? <laughs> at any rate, I guess my dagger is probably the safest bet then, huh? It should have at least some value since it almost slit Kin Chi Huang's throat. And again, it's nothing special to look at either. It's just an ordinary run-of-the-mill dagger. No, that should be perfect. Let's go with it. Even though we don't know anyone who can verify its authenticity, sure we do. In fact, he's closer than you might think. You mean me? That's right. From now on, you are. Voyager, the genius appraiser. It's perfect. Wow, you're serious. I can't wait to see how this turns out. Oh. Now that's settled, we're going to have to create a backstory for a resident genius appraiser. He'll need an ID, newspaper articles, online reputation, and so on and so forth. We'll need Caldia's help to fake all this convincingly, of course. Now then, let's get started, shall we? Be warned, we have a lot of work ahead of us. My, being a Phantom Thief is almost like a full-time job in its own right. <laughs> You're telling me. Alright, let the forgeries begin. It's, you know what, it's, it, this is pretty fun. Oh, and now we're gonna kill the metaphysical representation of forgery, is that what it is? That's pretty fun. That's pretty fun. Uh, does anyone have their own... One of him who is uninhibited doesn't look like it, because I would like to grab one to see the costume in action. Yeah, it doesn't look like we have uh, have one of them here. That's fine. In that case, let's just grab... I mean, if I'm correct, isn't yours like level 120? Yeah. 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 Uh, and in that case, honestly bring up you. Alright. Okay. Double Muramasa is gonna be crazy. Okay. 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 Let's go. The only sad thing is Muramasa's don't really work. Yeah, the diversionary tactic. They don't work well to get... Ooh! Like, they're good, but they're not outstanding together, right? Because when you do this, you force... Right? You, you, you kind of split the vote on them a bit, which is not great, but it's okay. It's okay, we'll just do this. And we'll go 100, 70, 100. Right, just start off as much as we can. Is this just gonna win? It did. <laughs> Tremendously silly. Alright. That's that done. Alright, that's enough for now. Let's pick this back up tomorrow. Even a Phantom Thief's journey begins with a single step after all. Good night, Master. Sleep tight. <laughs> yeah, good night. Okay, so, real talk, is there a, a joke about his voice actor or something being, like, the same voice as, like, is that what it's gonna be? 
Uh, is it going to be like Joker's voice actor? Is that, are we doing something like that? Is there a persona tie-in for, for Amakusa Shiro Fate voice actor? Uh, I forgot that he was Shiro Kotomine in the anime. That's freaking wild. Uh, Koki Uchiyama. Let's see here. Is there any relation to persona he's also the voice of tristan okay okay um i'm just gonna go control f no i don't see any persona here maybe not he's the the japanese voice of american dragon jake long that's wild yo okay no i guess not maybe there's no voice actor joke maybe it is just the fact that it works for him i don't know or maybe we'll get some deep reasoning all right, can I ask you something, Shiro? Of course. Ah, uh, is this about the Apple of Discord? Uh-huh. I was wondering why you suggested I hold on to it. Because just being a good person or valuing order wouldn't be enough to stop the Apple from potentially sowing Discord. Whereas you are one of the very few servants who have been entrusted with hope for the future and nothing more. Everything about you makes it clear that you're simply trying to deliver a message, not pick a fight with the universe. And since your origins lie in solely good, positive thoughts, the very concept of discord should be alien to you. At least, that was my thinking. Then again, maybe this is just what I wanted to believe, since I've always admired space and the stars myself. Got it. Thanks, Shiro. I promise I'll take good care of it. Not at all. Thank you, Voyager. It is kind of funny that we have him here as the name Shiro. And there's like... I want there to be a scene where someone goes, Shiro, and then him, the polar bear of, um, the polar bear of the freaking the Ilya pseudo servant, and, um, you know, Muramasa all look over and go, yeah. Oh, and, uh, both Emyas, right? Like, just all of them. It's the most common name. This is Kaldia. We're all done with the new with the forged newspaper articles. I'm sending you the files now. They all have spells on them so that the layout of the articles of themselves make the reader more susceptible to charms. Mash, that's that's scary to think about. I don't I don't like that. I don't What is that saying about the news world? Here are the headlines we came up with. Genius appraiser Voyager sees through Da Vinci counterfeit. Attachment article. Voyager, boy appraiser, discovers the Colossus of Rhodes' lost head. Attachment column. Voyager, youngest appraiser in history, shares findings, uh, shares joys in finding of real historical relics. Attachment interview. Isn't this a little much? Well, you guys really went all out. <laughs> these are great. Oh, wow. Reading these even makes me think. Oh, yeah, Voyager really is an expert at appraising antiques and artifacts, isn't he? Please keep it together. The servants almost never get asked to do work like this, so they were very, um... Excited. This article's great. Marketing? Who's this? I knew the modern era was all about marketing. Information is what sets the real thing apart from the fakes. With the right information, Im imitations can match or even surpass the originals in quality and reputation. Oh, is this Gil? No. Imitations? Who is this? No, that's a good thing, mind you. Let's see here. Voyager declares... Oh. Voyager declares direct current the ultimate form of electricity. Knock it off, Edison. There's a serious forgery we're doing here. Are you writers done with the next column yet? It's about time. It's about time to hit publish. It's gonna be five more minutes. No, make that hours. The muse of columnists has yet to grace me with her presence. Somebody summon an editor in here. <laughs> Great. Good. 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 <clears throat> Thank you, Mash. Please convey my sincerest gratitude to all the others as well. Of course, is there anything else I can do? Now that you mention it, yes, there is. Could you please let me talk to Professor Moriarty and Zhu Liang? No, no problem. Do you need their help for something? Yes, I do. We're all young, naive, and innocent after all. If we're going to engage in wrongdoing, we should try to learn from the best first. Naive? Innocent? Us? <laughs> well... Those two know a thing about deception. 
It's true. I must say, dear boy, I'm a bit hurt you didn't think to call on me for such a delightful caper. Oh yeah, my bad. You would have taken it for yourself. What kind of an apology is that? Or do you all need Zu uh, need help? Uh, or you all have need of Zhu Liang's knowledge? That's right. I'd like you two to come up with a backstory for this dagger. Hmm. We want to prove to this curator that Jinkei's dagger is the same one used in her attempt on Qin Shi Huang's life, eh? I see. As I recall, that dagger is said to have been treated with poison. In which case, the poison will need to show up during the appraisal process. That might be kind of tricky since I use Hydra poison. That's where the forgery aspect comes in. History books say that the dagger was made with a blade tempered with poison. However, it's very likely the real poison would lose its potency during the tempering process. In which case, another coating of poison must have been applied to the blade before it was tempered. Sorry, what was it after? After it was tempered. So that's the story we'll go with. And what kind of poison should we use? Let's see. Given what we'd have available at the time, I'd say botulinum or wolfsbane would be most appropriate. Whatever. I don't think it matters much either way. But is it really plausible to think there'd be any poison left in the blade after over 2,000 years? I'm afraid you're thinking about this all backwards. To convince this curate of this dagger's authenticity, whatever the reason may be for it, there must still be poison left on the blade. You see, we're going to create the kind of artifact typically reserved for the greatest of legends. Jinkai, your assassination attempt failed, and you paid with your life. But the Emperor was so impressed by your bravery that your dagger was secretly brought for the treasury to safekeeping. Uh, once the King em King, uh, Qing Emperor Empire had fallen, and the Han Dynasty had taken its place, the new Emperor would no doubt be at a loss as to what to do with the dagger that nearly took Qing Qi. See, I, I've learned recently that that is pronounced Qin. Qin there, so I gotta start doing that. Qin, Qin Shi Huang. I gotta start doing that. I say that because you'd be surprised at how often he comes up in regular conversation here. Part of him no doubt wished to commend your bravery in fighting against the same oppression he did. But as emperor, he certainly couldn't afford to be seen to endorse the notion of regicide. As a result, he'd be unable to dispose of the dagger, unable to disclose its existence. I suspect only a few of his most trusted retainers have been told of the dagger's origins. All right. I think that backstory should get us up to the latter, to the later Han Dynasty, to when, before the light, bruh, before the later Han Dynasty was established. What about the rest of the time between now and then? That could be more difficult. During the fall of the Xing Dynasty, the Red Eyebrows set fire to Chang'eng and made off with his treasures. If Jinki's dagger really had been stored there, it definitely would have been lost at the time. Not to mention, that was the only time Shang Eng was caught in the middle of a war. So, I'm not seeing a way that a relic from the Qin Dynasty could plausibly have been preserved. We could forge a record of its storage, but that would be only more implausible. Uh, what to do? At times like this, my good man, it's... I've found it simply best to go for it, as they say nowadays. Uh. Alright, I might have an idea. How does this strike you? I see. That does so seem like it could work, but... Indeed. I'll have to send another servant your way to complete the deception. Oh, drat. I wish, I do wish I could have gone myself. Be careful to choose the right person for the job. I'd do it myself, but I'm afraid I might not be terribly convincing in the role. In that case... Who are we getting? Yes, I'd agree. He should do nicely. All that aside... Amakusa Shiro. Yes? You're quite the villain yourself, aren't you? Heh. <laughs> Putting the ethics of it aside, I'd like to think that this is the most peaceful solution to this problem. Aren't you a firm believer in thou shalt not steal? Let's just say it all depends on context. And with that, he's the most accurate portrayal of someone of his religious caliber. Ha 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 ha. Didn't know you two were friends. Or not. <laughs> we're barely even civil to each other. There's nothing we have in common. Our beliefs, principles, motives, methods, processes, development, our conclusions. Well, we could not be more different. Well said. Honestly, if we weren't part of Caldia, 
I would have I would have used my noble phantasm on you the first chance I got. Well then, I stand corrected. It seems we do have at least one thing in common. If we can't see eye to eye, then we'll have to ensure the other ne never sees the light of another day. <clears throat> Leaving the principles of the wicked aside, I agree he should be a good fit too, but I'm not sure how convincingly he can act. Oh, I'm not worried about that. We're not asking him to be someone he's not after all. All he needs to do is perform the same role that he always has. Are we bringing in Chen Shi Huang to come in and get killed? It should be much easier than actually acting. Oh, and there's one more thing I'd like to ask of him. Huh? What was that? We're gonna have to wait for tomorrow. Son of a gun, I just realized. I'm like, oh, cool. I wonder what it's gonna be. We gotta wait. Ooh, you got me. You got me good. All right. Sounds good. I will see you guys next time for some more. Let's play Fate Grand Order as we uh, continue on with the event. We'll see you then for that, guys. Ciao.